Hi, everybody. This is Anne. Who else has seen chefs in the restaurants decorating sushi or desserts with multi-tip dispensers? Or hairdressers using those multi-tip dye applicators and thought, I wonder if that would work on clay? In this video, I collected a few of those multi-trailing tips, and I'll show you several ways I use them to decorate my pottery. When I do slip trailing, the single tip nozzle is what I usually use. And here are the other applicators that I've collected with various numbers of holes and configurations. Instead of making colored slips, I had some bottles of underglaze that have been sitting on my shelves for years. I thought I'd use those. I sieved the underglaze so none of the coagulated bits would go into the bottle and stop up the tip. You can see some of those little bits right along the edge of the sieve. I put a funnel into the bottle and poured the sieved underglaze into it. The underglaze should be the consistency of, like, thick milk. I made sure to test it out. I squeezed the bottle at first to get it started, but it was too runny. But when I stopped squeezing and just let gravity do its job, the underglaze came out just right. Let's try some fun patterns. I started out with a big sheet of packing paper. I could have freehanded these, but since I'm going to use them to decorate with, I started with guidelines. I placed a ruler on the paper and traced around it. I'm starting with the three-tip dispenser. Doing this on a long sheet of paper will allow me to choose a portion of the design that I like the best when I commit it to the clay. Jim had the idea to put these little black dots around it. Now that's cute. I cut the strip off and set it aside to dry completely. Now for the foretip. Note that I'm sliding the tips right on top of the paper. That seems to help keep it from dripping. Now let's try a straight line. I taped the ruler down, then slid the five tip applicator on the paper down the ruler's edge. Oh, I kind of like those skip spots. They look like bird tracks to me. Now let's try that again. Oh, well, that's better coverage, but the last two lines joined together. I still like it though, it gives it character. Now let's try the hair dye applicator. Now that's cool, but it's a little bit runny. Let's try it with this darker color. The underglaze is a bit stiffer. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's great. Those give me a couple of designs to choose from. Now those took about a half an hour to dry. Now I'll show you how I transferred that first three-tipped pattern. I threw a cup on the wheel and measured around the cup with a strip of paper. I measured out the section I liked the best and cut it along the guidelines. When the cup was still fresh, I took a damp sponge and moistened it to the area I wanted to transfer the design to. I then pounced the damp sponge over the paper as well to soften the underglaze and the paper. I lined up the top edge of the paper with the guideline I made along the top of the cup. When I had it where I wanted it, I again wet it with the damp sponge. Then I used a red rib really well to transfer all the damp underglaze to the clay. 
I went around it several times. When I peeled the paper back, oh, I was really happy with the transfer. Now here's the one I made earlier with the four tip. I embellished the designs a bit, then bisque fired and glazed them. Oh, I really like the rhythm of that calligraphy type of design. Let's try another idea. Again, I threw a cylinder on the wheel and created a guideline on the piece. I cut off a section of the mint green pattern. Again, I dampened the clay and the paper. I applied it to the clay where I wanted it, then braid it down with the red rib. This layer transferred well, just like the first one. Now I'm going to try putting the blue pattern over the green. I know it won't match perfectly, but this is an experiment. The second pattern was more difficult to apply over the green. I had to do more braying with the red rib, but eventually I got it. Now as the clay was still fresh, I thought I would belly it out to add another level of movement to the piece and see how the underglaze stretched out. The green underglaze cracked just a little bit, but I think it just adds a little character to the piece. Here's one I made earlier. I just bellied out the bottom portion of this one and then carved some lines along the top section. Again, I enhanced the designs a bit and then fired them up. I can see a lot of possibilities with this technique. Now let's see if I can freehand the applicators right to the clay. I created this cute little leaf platter and let it dry to a stiff leather hard. I used painter's tape as a guideline for my marks. Starting in the middle, I used the three tip and freehanded some straight lines on the clay. The first ones came out where I wanted them, but as the clay bent upwards, I had more trouble turning that corner. Here's another one that I made earlier. The good news is, that you can wipe off the marks you don't like with a sponge and reapply them. Now all I had to do was carve lines in the other side of the tray for this leafy effect. Now here's the one that I first made. I added just a little dart to it and then fired it up. And Jim had this brilliant idea. I threw a plate on the wheel. Now I'm going to use the four tip as a tool to make an inlaid design. I gently cleaned up the lines with a damp sponge. Ugh. 
Let me see what happens if I clean it up. Well, so much for that idea. Let's see if I can salvage it. I used a sponge to clean up the upper edges between each line. Oh, well, that's better. Again, I cleaned up the plate a bit and then glazed and fired it for this fun effect. I just showed you a few patterns you can make with these. When I was experimenting, I filled five pages with different patterns and I know you'd be more creative than me. I hope you give it a try. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It really helps us out if you subscribe and like our videos as well. See you next time in the studio.